this Valentine's Day, feel the love with Bondi Vet. Hello, my boy. From the passionate... Funny. <laughs> Put it away. ...to the unrequited... He's in love with me. The question is, how do I stop it? And the downright inappropriate. That's daddy, that's just wrong. We celebrate love in all its guises. I really don't get paid enough for this. So this is where the um, action's happening? Yes, this is where they live. They're free range in the backyard. Okay. Chris is on the road to answer an SOS call from Linda. So he just hassles her and just... Yes. When he's not in his little chastity cage, he, he's... Yes, yes, he jumps there. on her a lot. Um, he tries to make babies. Do you want me to get him out? I wouldn't mind seeing it. Bunny's fallen in love with his Flemish giant flatmate. He just won't leave five-year-old Archelina alone. So, Chris, you can see the problems we're having. Fairly, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty subtle gesture that Bunny... <laughs> Naughty Bunny. Naughty boy. Naughty. The thing about rabbits is they grow up very fast. They're sexually mature from eight weeks of age. He's four months of age, so he's almost in his prime. But, Chris, you must know yourself how awful it is when you get un unwanted Spl attention from the opposite sex. So know, it's horrible, isn't it? I wouldn't it? know what you're talking about. I've never had unwanted attention of, of that variety. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you mean. Poor Archie, look. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> and it gets very tiresome oh. for Archie. <laughs> oh dear, Bunny, stop it. So we need to castrate him. OK, wow. And he, yeah. But he's a bit small, isn't he? No, they're, I, they're there. They're there, they're there. Oh, they're that's there. good. OK. Yeah. Oop, he doesn't like that. So the only real solution here is the snip. Get rid of those hormones altogether and hopefully Bunny will start behaving himself. But that's no guarantee. You see, this could be dominance related rather than hormone related. If that's the case, then Bunny needs a new address. Bunny, <laughs> put it away. Oh, he's very upset. Well, at least we've got it on video, huh? You can look back on the good days. Yes, yes. <laughs> you look after him, won't you? I will, don't worry. <laughs> He is very um, special to us, despite his debauchery. He's very special, I'll give you that. <laughs> I feel that I'm taking away his, uh, you know, his manhood, emasculating him. Same way my partner feels, really, most days. <laughs> Operating on a tiny subject like Bunny is difficult. He's got this ability, even under anaesthetic, to actually suck them back in. So you touch them and he'll subconsciously pull them back into his body. So once you've got one, you hold on to it. That's it, one of the great careers cut tragically short. No more for Bunny. Now the big question is, has the desexing worked? Will the giant Archelina finally live a peaceful life? We won't know, probably for, even for another month or so, whether this has been a success. For lover boy Bunny, the operation worked and Archelina is one relieved rabbit. He doesn't seem to be very interested at all anymore. So he and Archie are just good friends now. It's purely platonic. Isn't it, Bun? No reaction at all. Grumpy Gizmo belongs to Sarah and David. Hello. Gizmo's our Persian cat, which is a rescued cat. And he's approximately 10 years old because being a rescue cat, it's difficult to age them. Lately, the Persian rescue cat has developed a rather embarrassing habit. Gizmo's got sexual preference, like me. So, hey? so, so. <laughs> I'd rephrase that. Yeah, well, how can you rephrase it? All he wants to do is hump my leg or my arm. Gizmo, give it a break. As soon as I come home from work in the evening and sit down and watch him at telly, he's on me and tries to hump me stupid. Yeah. Mm. No. No. Pack it up. No. 
we tried scolding him for it to try and prevent him from doing things like that. And it just makes him worse. Off you go. Come on, just call it a day. You've had enough of this. I'll go and tell your mother. That's it. We were told he was neutered, so really it shouldn't be going on. It's like, stop it now. It's got to the stage it is embarrassing. All right, David thinks it's funny. I don't anymore. I don't think he would do it when anyone was here, but I wouldn't want it to happen. Gizmo, stop it. Sarah is so fed up with Gizmo's antics, she's booked him in for an appointment with Scott later today. Pack it up. Hello, guys. Hello, guys. Hey, Gizmo. You got your Sorry boy back again. Oh, my baby. Yeah. No. Oh, your baby. My baby. Is it? At the Richmond Clinic, Sarah and David have arrived with Gizmo. Practice manager Maz has a soft spot for the frisky feline. How's he doing? Is he all right? <gasps> yeah, he's, yeah, he's, not he's too bad. Got, he needs to have a quick checkup. Oh, yeah. poor Gizzy. Because yeah. he wants to hunt me all the time. <laughs> honest, honest. <laughs> I mean, you're not even that keen on David, are you? So no, 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 she weird. hates me That's... most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quite believe that. Humping. Man, I wish I was a fly on the wall when Scott examines Gizmo. I don't think he's had a gay cat before. It's <laughs> 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 oh, some familiar voices. <laughs> Hello, guys. You all right? Hi, Hi, Hi. Hi. Hello, gorgeous. Thank you. So, Hello. Hello. They've brought Gizzy in to see you. Oh, my favourite ginger in the whole world. Have fun. OK. <laughs> oh, my God, you two are such trouble. Come on, mate, let's run, let's run. Here we go. Every time Gizmo comes into the vet practice, we have a bit of a bromance. We have a huge cuddle. He purrs away, and I absolutely adore him. Hello, my boy. Oh, dear. I know. He doesn't oh, like it. But today, he really doesn't seem particularly happy at all. Oh, dear. Look, got a right grumpy face on. He's normally a bit surly, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we sort of put up with it and we love him. Yeah. But he seems a bit grumpier than normal. He is you grumpier think that's... than normal. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. He needs to be looked at. His hormones are running. Oh, right. <laughs> As in... His hormones are running. Well, he's neutered, so that seems an impossibility. I don't think so. He's supposed to be I... muted. But... He's supposed to be, but his behaviour but... doesn't come across that way, not with David, anyway. If I'm sitting in an armchair, he would try to do me on. If I lay on the city, he'd try and do me leg. Yeah. Uh, come yeah. again? <laughs> Not amused that we're all laughing at him. Uh, no, I think that's probably why he's grumpy. I'm yeah. quite sure it is. Does he just show that sort of attention to you to and not you, no, no, Sarah? Not to me. Just me. Not just to me. me. Whatever. Just, just David. So, I don't know if you can supply pills or something for <laughs> him. I mean, that's Daddy. That's just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Let's wind this back. What I want to do is... Just give him a, a physical exam yeah. all right, and just check him over. If I get you just to hold him around the shoulders, please, Sarah, I'm just going to sit down. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important that Sarah and David have brought up this complaint with me. It is very strange behaviour, but sometimes when cats behave strangely, they're actually unwell. So I'm just going to have a little feel of his back. It does seem a little bit tender about me extending his hips there. Good boy. You'd know that Persians do suffer a bit from arthritis. Yeah, good boy. Now, I'm just going to have a feel at his back in here just to see and make sure that he's definitely been neutered. Sorry, mate. Oh, dear. It's the indignity of it, isn't it, Gizmo? But he's definitely been neutered. I think it's highly unlikely that he would have come from a rescue centre without them neutering him. Yeah. But here's the thing. Maybe he was neutered as an adult. And what that means is unlike a normal young kitten that's neutered early, they don't know what it is to feel sexually active. Yeah. He, on the other hand, has had all the testosterone coursing around his veins and he's just been a red-blooded male and he wants to perform. Continue, yeah. It may well be that your boy is feeling sexually active, but you're what he fancies. And not you, Sarah, sadly. Yeah, oh well. There's two issues here with Gizmo. One is a behavioural issue that he is doing this inappropriate humping. 
The second is that he has a medical issue. He has some osteoarthritis in his lower back and his hips, and it's making him a little bit more grouchy than normal. So we're going to do two things. Your job is to not respond to his sexual advances, and you're going to avoid any shaking, looking at him, talking to him, telling him off, none of that. You're going to completely ignore him, but what you're going to do is squirrel away in between the cushions of the sofa that you sit on a little spray bottle of water mm. and just give him one spray in the face. Cats hate being wet most of the time, but particularly sprayed in the face. So the reaction he'll have is of disgust, and that should immediately calm down his libido. And Sarah, for you, I know that you will empathise with the fact that he's probably feeling a bit sore mm. and he has a bit of arthritis and I know that you suffer with the same condition. He's uncomfortable. We're going to try a course of anti-inflammatories, OK? So you're going to be my nurse, you're going to be my behaviourist, and together I'm hoping we're going to have a happy and slightly less inappropriate ginger cat. OK. <laughs> sound good? That's yeah. brilliant, Scott. Yeah. All right, sounds good. I'm very pleased that there's nothing sinister, that it's just something that can be controlled. All right, yeah. and look, let's not judge. You know, he he's a lovely cat regardless of <laughs> who he loves. Okay. I'll just get myself a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be a good boy from now on? Mm -hmm. For Grumpy Gizmo, the water spray and arthritis medications seem to be working. You're not bothered about doing naughty things now. He's no longer trying to hump David. All you want is a big old cuddle, don't you? <laughs> nah, that's it. Now you relax, isn't you? Much to the delight of relieved owner Sarah. Gizmo is one big, cuddly, loving baby. And we love him. You're supposed to be a pedigree Persian pussycat. Look at you. Come on. Let's dry you off. <laughs> I had a visit in the clinic from a lady just the other day with a bird that is behaving quite strangely. It's attacking people. It's also having its feathers fall out. Now, I need to see this bird in its natural environment, so we're going to go and pay a visit right now. Hello, Chrissy. Chrissy. How are you? Thank you for coming so quickly. Oh, look at you. This is Harry. You're a mess. He's a, he's a shocker, isn't he? Harry is the pampered pet Sorry, of the Thomas. equally colourful hey. Chrissy. Jeez, he's raw there, isn't he? He is, yeah. And he's back, look. That's he, extraordinary, isn't it? He, he's totally bare there. He is. Looks he's like, like a, a plucked chook. I was going to say plucked turkey, but chooks Yeah, chook. I know. I can't work out why his feathers are coming out. <laughs> It's one of the worst cases I've ever seen. And now the first thing I'm suspicious about is the diet. I need to know exactly what Chrissy's feeding him. These are his... Beans? They are pulses. I soak them overnight. This is his red palm oil, mm -hmm. his seed, his millet sticks, his unsalted cashews. He washes it down with just a little glass of bubbles occasionally with mummy. <laughs> Mummy would insist upon that, wouldn't she? And whatever he doesn't finish, you probably have to finish, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. I know I spoil him, but I can't help it. I love him. He's my baby. I could eat him. He's so gorgeous. But going bald isn't Harry's only problem. He hates Chrissy's husband, John, and is not afraid to let him know it. Well, you leave me alone. Go on. Go. Tell you what, I hate that parrot. It's got to go. It's either him or me. Why are you so nasty? Why do you do this? <laughs> Harry's hatred of John seems to start out as outright aggression, but then, oh, it turns into something quite dysfunctional. Now he's having his way with my hand. Oh, he is too. You're not jealous, are you, Chris? No, you? I'm just, I've never seen him do it before. What's Chris gonna think of us? <laughs> it may look like love is in the air, but Harry's amorous gyrations are anything but. This is aggression on a new level. Yes. Normally he's just flapping his wings, biting you. Yeah. But that is the most aggressive and most dominant-minded gesture he can give you. You never see that, that is amazing. You know, it's actually similar to what a dog does when he's trying to show dominance, but I've never, ever seen a bird do that before. It's just bizarre. Now, I'm pretty sure that Harry's violent jealousy towards John is the cause of all this mass feather fallout, but I need to know for sure. 
I think we should set up a little sting. Okay, so we're almost ready to go. The camera's set up. Yep. One final request. Yes. Just a little hug, a little kiss, and then we leave. I'll explain later. In front of Harry. In front of Harry. Darling. Oh. oh. <laughs> this is going to send him into a frenzy. Bye, Harry. Bye, Harry. Bye. I feel so bad we're playing a trick on Harry, but we've got to find a solution. I mean, if, if we don't, he's going to be completely bald. Feathers. Oh my god. Well, let's find out. We've got the camera. So come on over here and let's have a look at what we've found. So we've just left the house. And he's at home alone. Ooh. And there he goes. Up. Right there. So while you're out or you're in bed and he's alone, this is what he's doing. Harry is the total attention seeker. This is self mutilation for the sympathy vote. He's he, doing it to himself. He's pulling the feathers himself. He's pulling his own feathers out. Why? So why is he doing it? Why? He's that frustrated that he's got nothing else to take his frustration out on apart from himself. You two are more than just friends in his eyes. He's in love with me. He's in love with you. But he doesn't want to have sex with me. No. Whenever he's not with you, right. you're with John, his competition. And he's smart enough to know that. Mm. He can tell a male from a female. Right. Using his sense of smell. Don't even try it. Don't even try it. The question is, how do I stop it? I can't be with him 24-7, can I? I? I can't take him to bed with me. I can't take him shopping with me. What do I do? We're going to put him on. Are you serious? We're going to put him on Prozac. Oh my God. And this will work. Prozac is used all around the world for dogs, cats, and birds to ease their anxiety issues. It works by increasing the level of serotonin in the brain, which is the feel good hormone. They feel better about the world. And I hope in Harry's case, it's gonna stop him getting to that breaking point. So I've got to add Prozac now to all his food. Food is another thing. He's eating too much as well. Right. Just give him some seed, small amount. Give him some greens like spinach, broccoli. He's going to become the biggest loser, <laughs> <laughs> isn't he? Well, Harry, it's you and me. Oh, this is as close as I can get. <laughs> Somehow I think we've got the right house. Chris is in Melbourne to hey, try man. to sort out a problem with a very vocal cavoodle. Are you Lola? Are you? I'm told that Lola has some bad antisocial behaviour that needs addressing. I'm not so sure if this is it or if there's still more to come. Hi Chris, come on Hello. in. She won't bite. There we go. Hilarious. I know, she's just got this so little tiny... Intimidating. Owner Serena is desperate to find a cure for the five-year-old's outrageous antics. When people sit on our couch, she jumps up next to them and starts humping their arm. I noticed that I've managed to get in through mm -hmm. the gate, mm -hmm. you know, thankfully with my life intact. <laughs> there was no humping of legs. She doesn't do the legs at all. So it's just the arm when people are seated. How long has she done this for? Um, she's five now and probably since she was about four months old. Okay. So it's always been a, a pretty big part of her. It is. Having my arm humped isn't anything I ever thought would be happening today. But if I am going to help out Lola and Serena, it is important I see Lola in action. I can't believe I'm willingly putting myself in the, the hot seat. Quite literally, but she isn't going to be offended if she doesn't do it. So will I. Oh, she's getting okay. nervous. I'm getting nervous too. Oh. It's a good sign, right? This is just a poor play. I think so. I think so. I'm sitting down. Lola's doing a lot of talking, but as for getting amorous, nothing so far. Is she likely if I talk or just stay quiet? Just, um, maybe just play with her a bit. Hey, 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 hey. She's growling, she's circling a bit. Lola wants his attention and, and, and she's just so loud. 
All the pursuit of science. Like, come on. I'm just going to sit back and just... You know. There we go. <laughs> mm. Wow. Career high point. I really don't get paid enough for this. This is certainly not the typical house visit. When I first arrived and met Lola, she was all talk and no action. Now she's no talk and all action. And what action? In many respects, it's fascinating to start with when you have a, a desexed female dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not just desexed, but female. Female. Humping. Yeah. Because yeah. humping isn't something we normally associate with females at mm -hmm. all. A lot of people think that when they see a dog that's humping, then it automatically must be a sexual thing. Well, often it's not. So the crucial thing here is working out Lola's motivation. I just want to try something. Okay. I'm making a lot of eye contact at the moment. And she's, she's not doing it. But we'll just see what happens when I go over here and look over here and start talking to no one in particular. And here we go. Look what happens. I'm starting to wonder whether Lola's antics are actually her way of getting attention. So there's really two things we have to look at. The humping, sure, because Lola, I hate to say, it's a little antisocial, a little forward. And the barking. Yes. Because that's not exactly pleasant when you're sitting at home trying to relax. Thank you. We can clown around and say this is funny, it's cute and it's engaging. But in fact, I think it's about a dog that's in distress. And as her owner, I, I don't want that for my pet. Dogs are very different inside versus outside. We need to get the whole Lola picture. All right. Could we go for a bit of a walk? Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah, let's do that. The fact is, this behaviour does need to be controlled. So the whole idea now is to take her out of her territory and see what happens. Hopefully, that'll give me a clue about how I can fix it. There's not a sound, is there? No, she just really enjoys her walk. She just wanders along. She's like the perfect dog in public. And this isn't what I expect from a dog that just put on such a show yep. and was so loud. It's so incongruent, isn't it? Mm. It's really, oh, the many shades of Lola. Yeah. <laughs> the amazing thing is you take Lola out of the house where she feels like she has total control over everyone and all of a sudden, we've got a different dog. There's no barking and there's certainly no humping. With all sorts of behavioural problems that you see as a vet. I'd say the majority of them involve either dominance, territorial behaviour, yep. attention seeking, pretty much those three. Mm -hmm. She's actually got all three of those. She's the trifecta. She is. Yeah. This double life that Lola's leading where she's well behaved outdoors but poorly behaved indoors, it's not fooling me. Even though this has only been a short walk, it's given me enough time to come up with a solution that I'm pretty sure is going to end Lola's humping ways forever. I'm going to meet you back at your okay, place cool. with my solution. Alrighty, All thanks, right. Chris. I'll see you soon. Come on, pups. Hello. Yes, the game's up. How Serena has put up with Lola's behaviour for all this time, I have absolutely no idea, but I'm quite sure she's really going to appreciate the solution that I've got in mind. <sighs> Let me guess. Yep. Yep. Right back to where it all began. So, I've come up with something that is going to change the rules around here. Okay. It's high tech. Highly expensive. Right. That's going to blow your mind. You ready? I'm totally ready. <laughs> A leash. A dog leash. Right. We have one of those. Mm -hmm. Yes. This one is now her inside leash. Right. The idea behind an inside leash is actually pretty simple. It gives Serena back her control and means she can correct Lola without touching her, without talking to her, without giving her any attention whatsoever. So, the moment the bad mm -hmm. behaviour starts again. Yep. Get the end of the leash. Yep. I haven't looked at her, I haven't talked to her. And now, get hold of her. And we walk her, whether she likes it or not, in here. And shut the door. Right. So she, Chris puts her in the laundry. She's in there for three or four minutes. Not a peep out of Lola, which is so unusual. Hi. Okay. 
So we'll go back up here. Okay. I can't believe it. We have silence. Immediately, there's not a lot of interest. I think Chris has nailed it, and it's down to me to, to help her with this. So it's a start. It is, it's a great start. And let's hope that is all it needs. Alrighty. Okay. okay. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> I was expecting a result, but this is pretty much instantaneous. All of a sudden, Serena is now back in control, all thanks to a leash. A lot of people think leashes are just for outdoors, but indoors, they can be pretty effective too. Hey, you want to say goodbye? No, I, 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 think, I think she's over you. <laughs> it was beautiful while it lasted. It was special. <laughs> I'll never forget you, Lola. Thank you. <laughs> See you, Chris. See you later. Bye bye. Are they talking to each other? Yeah. They do talk to each other, don't they? Scott's next two patients are in Hampton Hill. They're a pair of elderly tortoises that recently came to live with Simone and her young family. They seem very hungry today, don't they? A friend posted on Facebook that his parents were retired and that they were looking to rehome their tortoises and would any be in, anybody be interested in having them? Uh, and I jumped at it. Yes, yes, please, please. We have a boy and a girl, Molly and Atwin. We haven't had them that long, and I absolutely adore them. And they've become a very, very big part of our life, like all of our lives, the kids as well. Is he gonna like Apple? The pair will be Scott's oldest ever patients. They're estimated to be over 100 years old. We assume that they would have been brought over from Africa in between the world wars, the two world, the, the First World War and the Second World War, and they would have survived the Second World War in England somewhere, um, which is incredible. I was so excited to get them, and then suddenly was all scared about, oh, but I have to look after them really carefully. People before me looked after them so well, then to have brought them to this stage, I feel I can't sort of drop the baton now. But recently, Simone has noticed male tortoise Atawin has a problem. So she's called Scott to check him out. Hi, Simone. How Hi, are you? Scott. I can't wait to see my reptile patients. Yeah, come in and meet them. They're, they're, oh, there's there one of the patients. There he is. He's walking quite quickly for an old timer. They move quicker than you would expect. So, Hello. So this is Atawin. So this is Atawin. the boy. It's absolutely incredible, isn't it? To think that you're holding a hundred-year-old animal. I know. It's quite a responsibility. Isn't it? It's great being a vet when you can go out and about and meet other animals, but particularly ones so old, a full hundred years, it does make them incredibly precious creatures. So I can see that discharge. How long has that been there for? <sighs> Probably about two or three weeks. OK. And do you think it's affecting him at all? I mean, is he coughing no. or sneezing or...? Not that I've noticed. No. And he's eating lots. And eating as you've well. seen, he's active. Yeah. Um, OK. Having a general look at Atwin, he seems like a very healthy tortoise. But runny nose in a tortoise, generally it's not just a simple cold like in people. In a tortoise, if left alone, it can become something more complicated, something like pneumonia. I think what's happened in this case, he's a new animal to you. Yeah. And I think during the process of movement from yeah. the old to the new, yeah. he's an old boy, and they don't cope with change yeah. very well. Yeah. So I think he's probably got a little bit stressed, and as a result, has okay. developed this condition. Yeah. Oh, good boy. There you go. After putting a couple of antibiotic drops into Adwin's nostrils, he looks wholeheartedly unimpressed. But as a hundred-year-old, he's allowed to be a bit grumpy, but he seems very happy, and I'm sure he's going to make a full recovery. Good boy. Give him a rest. Yeah. All right, then. Give him a buddy. Let me take you to bed. I'm very relieved that we got Scott around. Part of me initially was, oh, it's just a bit of a runny nose, I don't want to waste his time. But um, I'm very glad that we did, we did call him in. So you've got another tortoise somewhere around here, haven't you? She's just over there in the corner. Yeah. Shall I go and get her for you? Yeah. Atwin's partner is a female called Molly. She's a lot heavier. And is she equal in age as well? Yeah, they've been together for about 80 years that we know of. And do the old couple get on very well? Yes, he, he, he can bother her at times and... Um, bother? What do you mean? Um, how do I put it tactfully? <laughs> I don't know. What are you going to say? <laughs> so, Atwin does harass Molly quite a lot and their mating ritual is essentially to headbutt and bite. 
occasionally, if he is being a bit rambunctious, I will bring him in the house or put him in the pen or just take him to the other side of the garden. But she doesn't actually seem that bothered. I've gone for flowers before, but maybe I'll try headbutting. <laughs> headbutting. Yeah. I've caught him on top of her a couple of times at the, when we first had them, and then she laid some eggs. Wow. Wow, well, so you've got tortoise eggs. I have tortoise eggs. Oh my goodness. You can't help but be really impressed that two old timers are busily getting at it in Simone's garden. So, whatever she's got growing here, it obviously works very well in that department. So, they're in here. We have two trays. That one has three in it. Wow, that's amazing. Look at that. You can actually see that there is some density in there. So it could be a yolk. OK. And a white, just like a normal chicken egg. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that it's naturally fertilised. But we know that yeah. these guys have been... Uh, Busy. ..getting on the good foot and doing the bad thing. Yeah. And as a result, there could be some tortoise babies in there. You never know. Well, they're doing well in this incubator. They're nice and warm, yeah. so let's get them back in there. Lovely. Good luck, little ones. All fingers crossed. Um, hope that we possibly get some baby tortoises out of it. You've totally got to invite me back when you get the pitter patter of tiny I will little tortoise do, definitely. feet. Definitely, oh, definitely. Slightly panic call, no doubt. Yeah. Oh, what do I do now? I'll check on Atawan's snotty nose at the yes. same time. Yes, no, that'd be lovely. Thank you. No well, thank problem. you for coming out. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. It's obvious to see that Simone is really dedicated to these tortoises already. She has real love for them. I think she has real respect for them and she wants to do the best by them. So she's the perfect new owner for them and hopefully they'll live a further long and happy life with her. Right, let's come and find Atawan. Yeah, the obligatory search for the tortoise. Scott's back at Simone's house to check up on one of his oldest patients How's that runny nose getting on? Hey, He's buddy. doing a lot, lot better. Good. Well, his nostrils look nice and clear, don't they, champ? And no discharge, which is brilliant. Good stuff, my boy, hey? Or sir, as I should say, considering how old you are. I'm really glad to see that Adwin is back to full health and looking great. But I'm very curious about the fact that this old boy managed to procreate with his girlfriend and produce eggs. So. What happened to them? I'm really interested to know. Right, come through and um, I'd like you to meet Maisie and Daisy. Wow. These are our little tortoise babies. Can I pick one of them up? Yeah, feel free. Hello. Hello, cutie. So which one's this one? So that one is Maisie and this is Daisy. Mm. They're a week old today. Yeah. And um, we had the pleasure of watching them hatch out. Which wow, was really? Amazing. When they were hatching, first of all, it was just a tiny little nose and a little face poking out. Slowly, one came out on its side, but the other one properly came out like a little dinosaur with its front paws first. And it was incredibly cute to watch. You can do this, little fella. I mean, they're absolutely fantastic. And to think that they've come from 100-year-old parents. I know. It's incredible. I really it? didn't think the eggs would hatch. I thought that was a real long shot. These little creatures are so amazing and extraordinary and I feel very honoured that I've been allowed to examine them for the very first time. But at some point in their life, they'll be examined by a vet that isn't even born yet, which is a bit frightening, but super cool at the same time. And if we do everything right, there's no reason why my grandkids or even my great grandkids might not be looking after these guys. You guys have got a lovely future ahead. We absolutely adore Maisie and Daisy. They've really become part of our family. A lot of friends have said, oh, are you going to rehome them and can we have one? It's like, no, they're ours to keep. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Kate. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you go and subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to watch more great content. Or for new, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, all you have to do is sign up at bondipet.com and we'll send you a link. We can't wait to see you there.